Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Peter. I'm the Director of Family Ministries here at Second Baptist in South Hadley. We are so glad you are here with us. And we're also excited about our new Advent video series called Christmas Countdown. So think back with me. As a kid, what did you hope for on Christmas? Maybe a new Lego set, a video console, a new bike? Were your hopes realized? Were they dashed? Well, today on Christmas Countdown, we discuss how hope can lead us to joy or disappointment. Joy or disappointment. And I think we all know which one we want on Christmas and in life. So stay tuned for the message and a song, and we hope you will be blessed and encouraged. Hello, I'm Joe Green speaking to you from South Hadley, Massachusetts. And today on Christmas Countdown, we are observing what Christians call Advent. Advent is the commemoration of that expectant waiting for the first Christmas, the Advent of the Christ child. Uh, and this four-part weekly series will help us um, prepare our minds and our hearts for Advent. So hope. We feel it, but what is it? On Christmas, children hope that they'll get a gift under the tree. And that expectation is based on the fact that, well, last year, mom gave a present. That console or that action figure with the kung fu grip. Hope is an expectation of the future based on experiences or promises from the past. So your mom put a tree, a gift under the tree last year, you can expect it again this year. Now, sometimes we use the word hope more like a wish, like I hope there's be snow on Christmas. But that really doesn't capture the biblical kind of hope, the hope of the Christmas story. The hope of the Christmas story is less like a wish, like I hope for a white Christmas, and more like that expectant waiting of the child who expects, based on mom's previous um, actions and her words, there's that expectant hope that that gift will be under the Christmas tree. Not just a wish, but a confident expectation. So when the first Christmas went down, when, so Mary, uh, the shepherds, Joseph, all of that was a fulfillment of hopes that the Jewish people had had for centuries. And that's why they were so happy, because when you wait that long for a hope, when that hope is fulfilled, you're full of joy. But these hopes were based on what God had done in the past and what he had said in the past. God had a special relationship with the people of Israel. He had saved them from slavery in Egypt. And then he promised that one day he would visit them again. One day he would restore the whole world. And he made these promises through prophets, like a prophet named Isaiah, who spoke centuries before the first Christmas. And this is what he told God's people to hope for. Isaiah chapter 9. This will be on your screen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. 
So because of promises like these, uh, the shepherds, Mary, Joseph, and many of the Jewish people had a great hope that a child would one day be born and would re, um, inaugurate God's kingdom, a kingdom of closeness between God and people. And so their hope was based on what God had said and done in the past. Now, hope, like faith, is often in something. Uh, the Christmas hope is a confident hope because ultimately it's a hope in God. Uh, that many passages in the Bible recount what God has done or the promises he makes to inspire us a confident hope for the present and for the future. And those stories in the Bible, they're meant to be our stories. Those hopes are meant to be our hopes as well. So what are, your, what are you hoping for on Christmas? What are you hoping for in life? What do you place your hopes in? Because what we hope for, what we place our hope in, it has a great effect on how we live our life. So if I hope in myself, then I'll probably try to gain control over more things. If I hope in security, then I'll try to uh, get enough resources to make my life seem secure. If I hope in a relationship, then my, my sense of meaning is based in that relationship. But the problem is, is all of those things go away. They're all temporary. So when I lose control or security or that relationship goes away, then I lose hope. And that's why there's so many people in our world who feel hopeless because the things they hoped in were fleeting and they were taken away. But when we hope in God, we're hoping in something transcendent, someone who is bigger than the earth, bigger than our problems. And so on Christmas, we remember those who hoped in God had their hopes fulfilled. What they hoped for, a Savior who would manifest God's presence and purposes in their life, they received that hope. So hope is expectation. But that doesn't mean we can see everything or know everything about our expectation being fulfilled. Uh, because we can't see the future. We can't see all the things that God might be doing. And because of that, our hope always has a little element of mystery, a very much like that child who has a confident hope that there'll be a present under the tree, but the details of what exactly does that present look like, well, there's a, there's a mystery to it. There's an excitement to it. So too, when we hope in God, we're confident that he, because of who he is and what he said, that he's going to come through. But the details of that, we're not, sometimes there's a mystery to that as well. And I think Virgin, the Virgin Mary is a prime example of this. Uh, she hoped, like the rest of the people, that God would send a Savior because he said it. But then she found out that she was going to be the one who would bear the Savior. So um, oftentimes, because our hopes are in God, they're bigger than us, which is good, but that will stretch us. Uh, that can even trouble us. And again, Mary, she hoped in God. He fulfilled her hopes. But now... This teenage girl, because Mary is probably a teenager, she would be the one bearing the Savior. And so if God gives us a hope beyond ourselves, then we should expect to be stretched beyond ourselves. And that's both positive, we grow in ways we didn't expect, but also um, things that are difficult. We should expect struggle as our hopes are fulfilled. You should expect God to move, but sometimes in a way that we don't see, we don't perceive, in a way we don't understand. So you may even be disappointed because God didn't fulfill your hopes. But then you ask, then that's when we ask, well, am I hoping in my plan or am I truly hoping in God and who he is? So Christmas, it reminds us to hope in God today. Christmas is a story of hope in God being fulfilled. And because that hope was fulfilled in the past, it can give us today a confident hope in the present and in the future. And so this prophecy through Isaiah that I read earlier, that was a hope fulfilled. And on Christmas, the king of the universe laid aside his majesty and was born to a poor peasant couple and laid in a manger. Now a manger is a feed trough. So Christmas tells us of a God who intervened in human history so that we have tremendous hope for the present, for the future. We have a hope for Christmas and we have a hope every day. So I hope that these words stirred in your mind the desire to hope. But now let's listen to this next song, which will stir in our hearts a desire for the Christmas hope to be a bigger part of our lives and of Christmas. Oh, 
come, O oh come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the sun of God. shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, desire of nations by sad division cease and be thyself our king of peace rejoice rejoice Emmanuel shall come to thee O Israel rejoice Well, I hope that stirred in you uh, some hope for Christmas. And if you have any questions or you want to connect with us more, I encourage you, first of all, to subscribe uh, to this channel, to like it, and put a comment in and we'll respond. Or if you want to connect with me, uh, my email is pastorjoe at sbcsouthhadley.com. And you could go to our website, sbcsouthhadley.com, to connect with any of our staff, see what we're doing at Second Baptist Church. Have a Merry Christmas.